I've been using Vision Pro for even more work lately. Shocking, I know. But with Vision OS 1.1 out, there's some bug fixes and some changes that make working from it even better. And there's some new apps. And I've kind of decided I don't think I'm gonna do a one-off video of Vision Pro as a review. I'm gonna do these kind of videos where I talk about how I've been using it and the different things you can use with Vision Pro as kind of my more long-term, long-spanning review. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Now the biggest fix for Vision OS 1.1 for me isn't the fact that personas are dramatically better. And, and they are, they are dramatically better. But it's the fact that the open app action in shortcuts actually works now. In my first video about Vision Pro, I talked about how I wanted to have a way to basically launch workspaces, launch groups of apps in Vision OS because it's kind of clunky right now to build up workspaces. So I built this shortcut here called Space Cut. This is just a simple menu of shortcut actions and it lets me pick from different kinds of work I do and then opens all of the apps that are associated with that. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below so you can check it out. Just rename the menu options to what you want them to be and then set the apps you wanna open in the open app action. Now the downside of this is it doesn't do any sort of window placement. So if I run this shortcut, it just opens up all the apps right in front of me wherever I'm looking and then I have to move things around. It would also be really nice if in shortcuts there was a close app action. So that way I could like close all the apps that I had open before opening new windows. So that way I could, you know, maybe I have the TV app open or a game or something like that and I wanna shift into my writing mode, close everything that's open and then open up all the new apps. But overall, using Space Cut, it dramatically speeds up me launching all of my apps when I'm using Vision Pro. Now, speaking of apps, a new app I've been using is called Status Bar Builder. This creates a small menu bar that can be placed anywhere. I built one out that's fairly similar to the Mac menu bar. The menu bar I built kind of takes advantage of a lot of the features in the app. So it has the time and date, battery life for Vision Pro, local weather, today's calendar events, and shortcuts I run. The shortcuts I have set up to run from here are my action cut shortcut. And that's my big shortcut that contains a bunch of other smaller shortcuts that I run from like the action button on my iPhone or the dock of my iPad. This is just a really handy uh, catch-all shortcut. The other shortcut I run is my previously mentioned one and that is space cut. So I can quickly open apps right from the menu bar here. Being able to reach out and just tap on one of these shortcuts to run it is really cool. No matter what I'm doing, it's just really useful. For calendar events, you can select them in the menu bar and it'll jump right to that event in the calendar app. For me, I keep the status bar right in front of me, but down just a bit. This way I can glance down and see it, but it's not distracting when I'm writing or reading something. What I like about status bar builder is it gives me all the info that I could need that's tucked away in control center, but it does a great job at staying minimal and not distracting. You can customize the status bar to have different colors or if you want to turn off the background. Personally, I like to keep it minimal and distraction free. One thing I'm still doing very similar is I'm still working in about two thirds of the environments and I pretty much use the environments all the time when I am working because it's this really nice distraction free area. I, I have ADHD, I get distracted easily, but even with people that don't have ADHD, we all get distracted. And the nice thing about environments is it blocks out all of this. So I still keep environments at about two thirds. So this way I can still see my keyboard. But one thing I realized, and I don't know why I didn't think of it to begin with, but the more light you have, the easier it's gonna be to see that keyboard. So the keys on the keyboard and stuff like that. So in my office here, I actually have a ceiling fan with ceiling lights. I don't like to use them because it's just a lot of light. I like to kind of keep my office kind of low light, use natural light for when I'm editing and stuff like that. I, I just don't like that light, but I've been turning it on when I'm using Vision Pro and it's perfect. I can see the keyboard super clearly, trackpad, my Diet Dr. Pepper, whatever, I could see it all. But it doesn't take away from the fact that I'm using environments. Now, I still really dislike the fact that I can't use a full 100% environment mode and get like a keyboard cutout. That would be really nice. That's like top of my wish list for Vision OS. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. 
I worked in the IT field for about nine years, and one day we set up this like fake coffee shop. It had open Wi-Fi network, normal devices, nothing, nothing like super special. But we saw that we could actually snoop on the traffic in this Wi-Fi network. Now with Surfshark, your data is completely encrypted from your device to its destination. Well, this isn't a, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to lose kind of thing. Data is the new gold and people will do tricky stuff to get a hold of it. One thing I really love about Surfshark is the fact that they don't keep logs. VPN services that keep logs are defeating the point. With Surfshark, you're also able to change your location. So say you're here in America and you've heard, oh, UK Netflix has a gold mine of content that I can't get here. So you can use Surfshark to virtually change where your computer exists so I could change it to be in the UK. So then I can see UK Netflix. You can do this with other stuff like Formula One or Hulu if you're outside of the US. I really like Surfshark. In fact, it's a service I pay for myself. I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can go check it out. Use code LOLLY to get an extra three months for free. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now, I got something wrong in my first Vision Pro video. Uh, I said in there that apps like Safari and the built-in apps don't have multi-window support. Turns out they do. So I was approaching Vision Pro a lot like the iPad, that I should be able to uh, select the icon of the app and be able to open up multiple windows of it, essentially. That's not how you do it. In fact, every app is a little different, which is kind of frustrating, and that's why I totally missed it. So for example, for Safari, you have to go into the tab window button and then select new window. This will then create a new Safari window. For apps like Notes, you can pinch and drag the note out and move it into this separate window. This, however, doesn't give you another full Notes app window, just a single note in its own windows. Same thing with apps like Messages. Mail, you can drag Messages out and create a whole new window for the app. For files, you need to long pinch on an item. From the menu, you can then select Open in New Window. Now I'm really glad there is multi-window support, but there definitely needs to be a common trigger for every app to open multiple windows of the same app. Because remembering how to do it in messages and then how to do it in files, that's uh, not good. Now, another thing to keep in mind is iPad compatible apps also support multi-window. Uh, apps like Drafts, you can just drag the content out of it, drop it, and it'll create a new window. RSS has been a big part of my workflow but weirdly, there is no good native RSS apps on Vision Pro. I've been using the app Lear in iPad compatibility mode as my RSS app. Now on my iPad, I like the Reader app, uh, but that one is not available on Vision Pro right now. So I've been using Lear. I'm honestly really surprised at the lack of native RSS apps on Vision Pro. It's a really nice device for reading an article in. Uh, and the iPad app is fine, but Vision Pro apps, the native ones, they just feel so much better. And especially if you're using the eye tracking, it's just so much more smoother. One thing I have noticed is that eye tracking in iPad apps, it's not impossible, but it's not easy. It, it can often get confused because buttons are really close together. Another surprise is the lack of read it later or bookmarking apps. And again, native ones. There's a lot of iPad compatible ones, but as far as, you know, good native ones that, you know, have the features that I want, which really honestly isn't that much, there's none. Now I've kind of been getting around this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one of them is Gladys. Gladys is a shelf app that launched with iOS 11. This app allows you to drag and drop anything into it and save it for later. Gladys is native on Vision Pro and I've been using it again, mostly just to save images and links that I'll need later. This has been really key for me, but really I needed a way to save articles, gear I wanted to check out, apps I wanted to cover for the channel. I really need that. That is that is really key for me so I don't lose something. Now, before Vision Pro came along, I was using an app called Raindrop IO, and I'm still using it a bit on my iPad, but I've now built a shortcut called SaveCut. This is a shortcut that saves all of those types of links into things. I created an area and separate projects in things for the various links I want to save. The way this works is, is it looks at the URL and if it sees that it's from the app store domain, it knows that it's an app and will just automatically save it to my apps project. 
If it doesn't see that domain, it'll ask me if it's either an article or gear, and then it'll save it to the right place. Using a task manager as a read it later app isn't actually like a weird idea. Cause if you think about it, a read it later app is just a list of things you want to do later on. So I've just been, you know, saving articles in my task manager. When I have a minute, I pull up that project, read the articles and then check them as completed when I've read them. For gear, when I buy the gear, I just check it off as completed. And for apps I want to check out when I add them to the video that I want to cover them in, check them off and move on. In the music app, I have been using the mini player a lot. Unlike with macOS or iPadOS, you can't hide the music app and still have stuff playing in the background. You have to have that music app open. But the music app is really big. With the mini player, I don't have to give up so much space once I pick what I want to listen to. You also get a nice window of just album artwork. You can select the mini player and still get playback controls, volume controls, and the ability to favorite. Plus there is the menu for options like adding to library, going to that album or artist in the main app, or suggesting less. While the point of Vision Pro is to have these massive windows in front of you, you don't need that all the time for certain things. So I love when apps let me select what I need out of them and then just get out of my way. And this is kind of what the mini player does for the music app. Something I found really cool when I was working on my last couple of Vision Pro videos is I was able to have my script open while filming B-roll. Now, normally when I film iPad videos, I'm filming this iPad Pro right here. So, I use this iPad mini here to hold up my script. So I'm having to use multiple devices. But what was really cool I found is like, I just had my script off in the background and I was, you know, capturing the screen recordings, which by the way, screen recording capture on the Vision Pro really needs some love, like some built-in auto stabilization and leveling. It's rough, but besides the point. But just being able to have the script, you know, look at the line and be like, okay, this is the B-roll shot that I need. Go and record that, move back to GoodNotes, cross it off all on the same device. It was just really kind of nice. It's not revolutionary, I know. But you know what it did do is it made me think about accessories that could go with Vision Pro. And I was thinking like, what about an Apple Pencil? Like what about a hardware pencil that you're using that's paired with Vision Pro and you could put like your GoodNotes document down here on the table and just start marking it up with a hardware pencil. I thought that was kind of interesting. Vision Pro ultimately is a very focused device. I cannot hammer that nail hard enough. If you're somebody that gets distracted easily, whether you're doing emails or writing or whatever kind of work you're doing, if Vision Pro can support it, you might want to check it out. The immersive environments really help me block out distracting stuff. And then pairing that with noise canceling headphones, I'm just like in my own little world. I'm really bummed about the fact that I can't edit video on Vision Pro. That's the biggest part of my workflow that I can't do on Vision Pro because the iPad version of Final Cut is not there. I'm not going to use that other video editing app that is on there. Just not going to do it. I don't have a Mac, so I can't do Mac screen mirroring, but I will fully admit I have been looking at like a Mac mini to do like the Mac screen mirroring on Vision Pro because I, I've just heard it's really cool. But I'm loving doing all of my writing and admin work on Vision Pro. But if there's a video about like a specific iPad app or iPad feature, I'm still writing on my iPad here. So it's kind of like a mix and match area. It just really depends on the project on if I use my Vision Pro or if I use my iPad. So that's an update to how I've been using my Vision Pro. If you all have one, let me know how you've been using it in the comments below. I really wanna hear from people about this. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.